Welcome to my camper. Come on in and see what I'm making today. I'm using a boneless chuck roast that I got from the best store on earth called Fairway. They're in Iowa and Illinois. And I used to go to them when I lived in Illinois. They have actual butchers there, like six or seven of them to wait on you. This chuck roast was only $3.99 a pound. It was a little over three and a half pounds, and it was $14.30. That is unbelievable. Wait till you see it. To make this wonderful sauerbraten recipe, you will need four cups of water, two cups of red wine vinegar, 12 whole cloves, two bay leaves, three teaspoons of salt, three teaspoons of brown sugar, one boneless beef chuck roast, equaling four pounds. The one I have is a little over three and a half pounds. You need a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of oil, one large onion cut into wedges. Didn't have a large one. I used two of whatever size these are. Five medium carrots, two celery ribs. Okay, here are the directions. In a large bowl, combine the water, vinegar, cloves, bay leaf, salt, and brown sugar. Um, I have a large bowl, but I don't think this would do well in a bowl. Perhaps um, a bathtub, but not a bowl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this meat in this cake pan. Oh, yes I am. Look at that. Whoa! The marinade will consist of four cups of water, two cups of red wine vinegar. That bottle I had was just a tad more, a smidgen more than two cups. So I just used the whole bottle. This is the salt. It just said regular salt, didn't say sea salt, Himalayan. You can use what you want actually, right? Right, because you are anyway. All right. That was, um, this is bay leaves, two bay leaves and 12 whole cloves. Okay. Put some cloves here. See, it doesn't get cooked with this, so I don't have to worry about not being able to find these horrible cloves. This is just going to marinate. And uh, three, tablespoons, three teaspoons of brown sugar. I'm going to stir this, you know, for now, anyway. So two cups of red wine vinegar, four cups of water, 12 whole cloves, two bay leaves, three teaspoons of salt, three teaspoons of brown sugar, and uh, boneless chuck roast. You can go as big as four pounds if you can find one. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to blend these spices a little bit. This is crazy. Crazy. I'm going to cover this and refrigerate it for two to three days. And every day I'm going to turn it twice, twice each day. And this is great because I have the next three days off, which is why I timed it this way. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover it and put it in the refrigerator, turn it twice a day for the next three days, and then I'll get back to you. We're back. Okay, the next step is to brown this meat 
in the oil. So I'm going to turn on my stove. It says two tablespoons, but I don't know. I just like never enough. This is about the only thing that I kind of eyeball. Everything I measure diligently, I must say. Now I'm going to take a quarter cup of flour, all-purpose flour. I have a large cooking surface. Can you see? This is it in my RV. This is it. It's pathetic. But they say when you're starting out camping full time, start out with a small rig and then you can see what you need and then your next vehicle can be bigger. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay. This meat has been marinating for two days. I'm removing it from the marinade and I have to dredge it in flour. I'm going to need more flour, don't you think? Quarter of a cup. Not when you're cooking a side of beef. You need more than that. Look at this. I just can't get over this meat. I'm telling you, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Every time I go to that store, Fairway, and I have all the meat lined up, and it's just, you know, beautiful. I'm thinking, well, if you could eat fish raw, which is sashimi, why can't I have them shave off some meat and do the same thing? I mean, really? Okay, so now I'm going to put this big boy in this pot. Now I have to discard this marinade and all the spices, but the recipe calls for saving two cups of the marinade to make the gravy with later. I actually took more than two cups, just in case. I'm going to turn the cooktop off and transfer this meat to my crock pot bowl. There's really nothing in there worth saving, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to select high heat on my crock pot, and as far as the time, I'm going to cook it for eight hours. I'll be home all day, and I can check it periodically, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay, I have to add in the reserved liquid, which I see some cloves floating around. Bad boys, get out. The only time my mother used cloves was when she made a canned ham, as they used to back then, in the oven. She would score the top of it, and wherever the crisscrosses were on the meat, she would put a clove brown sugar, and pineapples. Slices. I don't make mine that way. I use a shank ham. The brand name is Cook. That's the only one I like. Cook's. And I simmer the whole thing in water for about two and a half hours. It removes a lot of salt. And it's so juicy and tender that it would bring tears to your eyes, probably. Well, maybe not tears, but... All right, I'm going to put these on the side. Okay. I know this came with a lid. It's just a matter of finding it. You know, in such a small RV, you think everything would be right there. Well, it is. It, it was right there. I just didn't look. Okay. Now I'm going to put this on. Did you know that these are only to be locked when you're, like, traveling, like, bringing it somewhere? You can cook with it on, I was told. But I'll just leave them unlocked. We'll see what happens eight hours later. To make spätzle, 
you need four cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of salt, plus another tablespoon to put in the pot of boiling water, eight large eggs, and three quarters cup of milk. You'll also need a bowl and a spatzel maker. Turn the heat on high to get the pot of water cooking. Whisk together these eight large eggs. Add the milk, three quarters of a cup. Salt. And four cups of flour. I'm going to forego finishing this up with a uh, whisk. I think a cement mixer is would work better. So I'm just going to use a spoon. The recipe says you can use a hand mixer as well. But I'll use a spoon. Okay. Let me finish mixing this and I'll get back to you. It's a good thing I didn't use a hand mixer because I think I would have burned the motor out. Cement mixer would be uh, would work a lot better. Okay, now the recipe calls for letting this batter sit for five to ten minutes. So I'm still waiting for the water to boil, and I'll get back to you. Well, let me show you how I'm doing with these. So far, I got this many made. They get bigger as I go on because it's very tiring, you know? Okay, let me make sure you can see. So, when the spoon is wet, when it's actually dipped in the water, okay, you put that much on it, and you just touch the water with it, and it falls off. I this is the finished Spätzl. It's a huge bowl. One recipe made a large bowl. I had the sour braten in the refrigerator for the last two days. Well, I made the Spätzl cake and the German chocolate cake. I'm going to add some water and cornstarch. I really can't say how much. You just, you know, a cook kind of just knows. And it also depends on how much um, liquid you have in the pan that you're adding it to. So I'm just going to do it slowly. I have this on simmer. which is number three on my Cuisinart double induction cooktop. I will bring the camera over. Okay. I know it kind of looks like ham hocks or something, doesn't it? But it's really on a very slow simmer. Now what I want to do is just take a small portion of it out of this pot and put it in the smaller pot where I'll add the spätzle. Just like pasta, and I've said before, you really don't want to put all your pasta in with your liquid, liquid spaghetti sauce, water, etc. Whatever you're whatever you're making. By the way, this is day two of my three days off this week. Oh boy, I'm ready to plate the sour braten from the smaller pot. I'm not gonna eat all this, but I just want to put it on the plate anyway. Give myself carrots. Good vision, you know. One more in there. Come on, carrot. Let's go. Okay, look at how tender that meat is. Okay, going to try it now. 
before I do, let me show you what I'm wearing. I've got my Oompapa hat that I got at Adventureland uh, at the Oktoberfest. And my Adventureland Oktoberfest t-shirt. Too cute, isn't it? This is about as much German attire as I'll ever All right, have. Now the taste test. I already know it's going to be good. And even if it's not, I'm going to lie. Let me tell you, after what I went through, let's just say this was a labor of love. Could have been a labor of hate. Now, how can you tell by just one forkful? You can't. Nope, still can't. Let me try this little spitzel. Oom pa pa. Carrot. Done to perfection, I must say. Meat. Two thumbs and eight fingers up. This was really good. You know, it took a lot of time. A lot. Like days. Not just the fact that it had to marinate in the refrigerator for two to three days. But just the prep work, cooking time. It was a lot of work. Would I do it again? For you, yes. Just for me, absolutely not. I hope you like this video. I would buy the already made spätzle in a bag, the way to go. Or I could just make them the way I did. That That isn't so bad. I, I just made so many, you know. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for watching my video. Today is a great day for a great day. I'll see you on my next video. Bye-bye.